Hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder. In my recent videos, I've been asking you guys what plane should I go out with in the next video and then also which mode. So naturally, I'm gonna ask you guys that same question right now. What plane do you want me to go out with in the next video and also in which mode? Leave your comments in the comment box below. But this time, you guys have decided me to go out with the... Dora of any kind in RB. So, I'm gonna be going out with the Falk Wolf 190 D12 in both arcade battles and realistic battles just because I want to keep everybody happy. We'll do arcade first, then RB after. I'm not sure if we're gonna do every single mode in each video, but this time, let's keep everybody happy. So, I had three choices of what I could have gone for this time. I could have gone for the D9, the D12, or a D13 for the Doras. I opted not to go for a D13 because it's a premium plane and not everybody's gonna have access to it. At the same time, you can make an argument, maybe I should have gone for that, because not everybody's gonna have access to it, but I opted to go with the D12, not the D9, because, hear me out, the D9 is a very good plane, and actually it's a little bit of a hidden gem in arcade battles, because take a look at the battle rating right there, 4.7, I don't think many people are aware of this, but that's actually a relatively low battle rating, and especially at tier 4. 4.7 is actually lower than a lot of tier 3 German planes. So consider that fact, and that is quite nice to have. That's a little bit of a hidden gem. I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of. Otherwise, in RB, its battle rating is exactly on par with other tier 4 planes for the Germans. But it's just AB specifically. That is a low battle rating. Now, I opted to go with the D12 because it has more of a consistent battle rating. 6.3 all around. And I thought it would just make more sense to go with something like that. Now, in terms of flight specification, 767 kilometers per hour, maximum speed, turn time 19.6, rate of climb 28.3. You guys know what German planes are like. They are meant to build an altitude advantage, boom and zoom, not turn fight, because they're not built for those, for turn fighting purposes. They're built to boom and zoom, and given the fact that they have heavy armaments, you're ideally supposed to kill your enemy in that first swoop. If you have to then circle around, then you're kind of wasting time. Try to kill them in that first swoop. Otherwise, build up altitude advantage, boom and zoom, yada, yada, yada. You guys know the drill, I'm sure. Now, comparing this plane to the D13, the main differences between the two is the fact, well, they're pretty much the same in terms of flight performances, but because the D13 is a premium plane, it gets a slight BR buff by having a battle rating 6.0. But the main differences between the two is, apart from the battle rating, it's the armaments. Essentially, what you're getting with the D13 is more ammo, but kind of less firepower, a little bit. The D13 has three 20mm cannons with 750 ammo, opposed to the D12 of two 20mm cannons with 440 ammo, but you get a 30mm cannon with 85. So essentially, kind of more firepower, more damage output, but less ammo to work with. I think you could really go two ways with this. To be honest, I think, personally, I'd be more opting to go for the one with more ammo, the D13. Because, well, I would just prefer to have more ammo, so that means I don't have to go back to the airfield or anything like that. Especially if I'm playing an RB. Otherwise, an AB, it probably doesn't matter. So, in terms of modifications, and the ammo most specifically, I'm using stealth belts because these are the most damaging components for the Falco of Doras. At this stage, they're not like Hispano cannons where you can get air target and that is just this high explosive all around. The stealth belts are actually really, really good for the German planes here and hence why I've opted to go with them. Now, another nice feature about the Doras is that you can get bombs on your planes. How, how much more firepower do you need? You can actually get bombs if that's what you like to put onto your fighters. I never do it because it weighs down my plane and it's just not really my sort of style, but the option is there if you want to do something like that. But anyway, guys, all right, like I said, we'll do arcade first and then realistic battle. That's pretty much the Doras in a nutshell. Let's get going into a match. All right, guys, so here we are on a matchup on Merchant Fleet, a nice open map with not too much geographical features, but because the ground targets are sort of dispersed around the map, it's quite a nice one to use for the Germans because that means that I can just single out my targets one versus one and usually there are low-lying targets, the one that go for the ships, and because of the dispersion all around the map, it just makes a really nice map to play on with the Germans and do your booming and zooming. So this is my opponents. Now let's do a little bit of a test here and I want to prove a point. Let's count how many people are using German planes on my team. 
and their team, but we'll just count my team. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Two-thirds, or sorry, maybe even three-fourths of my team has gone Germans. This is a point that I'm trying to prove here. I'm not, I'm not going to be complaining about it or anything of that matter. I'm just making an observation. This is something that I like to call flock, or sorry, perceived greatness flock mentality syndrome. Where people generally, especially in arcade, depending on which tier you go into, they perceive a nation to be greater than another one. And so the majority of players will tend to go for that nation. So the low tiers, it's the Russians. Higher tiers, it's the Germans. Now, it's just an observation, like I was saying. I'm not really complaining. I'm not even sure if there's anything you could do to even fix something like that. It's where people see that one nation is kind of outperforming and then everybody goes for it. It's a little bit of a shame though and hence why I kind of prefer actually using nations that are underdogs like the Japanese because I'm just that sort of person. I like to go for the underdog nations. It's not to say that the other nations are bad though. I mean every single one can compete with maybe the exception of the Americans at tier 4 having particular problems at tier 4 because their 12.7s don't do a lot of damage at this tier. But otherwise, you get huge amounts of people just going Germans. And that makes it very, very dangerous. Because firepower is a very essential thing. It's not the end all. Because if you go for the Japanese, then you have, like, for example, a very good ability at turning. If you go for the Russians, you have a better ability at turning than the Germans. And still decent firepower. And same goes with the Brits as well. Decent firepower, better turning, still very decent planes. You can still do very, very well with all the other nations. Perhaps a bit more difficult with the Americans. But with that mentality, because everybody thinks that the Germans are great, the greatest, then everybody goes for it because, well, they think it's the easiest thing to use. And I do agree. It's very, very easy to use. But it's not to say that the other nations suck. And the same goes for the Russians at lower tiers. At lower tiers, you see a lot of people, especially at like tier 1, tier 2, a lot of people going Russians because they're early 20mm cannons. I'm not really sure these days, but back in the day, especially tier 3, you used to see a lot of Yak-9Ts and Yak-9Ks and whatnot. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm just using my advantage of my German plane. And I'm just trying, what the hell, <laughs> to use a lot of speed to get on my enemies. I was really worried about that BF-109. I was going to break off from him and not head him on. Because the last thing I want to do is head on a German plane. Something that you have to learn as a rule of thumb, especially in these higher tier matches. Do not head on, especially against a German plane. Okay, maybe other certain planes you can head on. Like uh, a Mustang because of the 12.7s, you know, no problem, whatever. But a German plane, don't do it. Don't do it. Especially a Farquhar F8. If you see a Farquhar F8 and you head him on, you are literally, you deserve that death. That's all I can say. Because with its 30mm cannons on it, I'm not even joking. Like, I mean, the 20mm are really powerful on German's planes or any other plane for that matter. But. The 30 mils on the F8 is just ridiculous. Like, that's all I can say. It is just outstandingly powerful. You can kill people within a split second of opening fire on them. Those 30 millimeters are ridiculously powerful. So all I'm going to be doing now is flying away, just making sure that there's no enemy behind me. Notice whenever I'm flying away, it's towards my ally's spawn, my own spawn. And that's just because I want to make sure that, well, there's two reasons. One, I get cover from my allies because I'm closer towards our spawn. And secondly, because if a lot of my allies are still on the battlefield around the central location where these guys are below my allies, then the enemies are more keen for going for them rather than myself, who's going to be firstly farther away and then also more protected because my allies are closer to me. 
So it's kind of like using these guys as cannon fodder. Or, I don't know, scapegoats? Is that the right word? Something like that? Yeah, something like that. We've got to be very keenly aware of everything that is going around the battlefield right now. There's a Falkwolf down here, and there's a Falkwolf down there. I'm going to actually pull up and off to the side. Remember what I said about heading on? That looked like that Falkwolf down there was actually going to pull up to me. I didn't even have to zoom in. It just looked like he was going to be heading my direction and trying to engage into a head-on. So the last thing I want to do is do a head-on. Now, if I wasn't recording a video, I'd probably just go for it anyway. Because, like I like to say in these videos, was the life of one plane to me. It's, it's nothing. It's arcade, right? It doesn't mean anything to me. Life of one plane. Let me kill this guy really quick. Good. Now I need to fly away. So I'd be a lot more aggressive, but for the sake of this video and trying to show you guys the best... the plane in the best possible light, I am really... Oh, shit! <laughs> trying to be a bit conservative. That's a Mustang. I know it's a Mustang. As I talk about the 12.7s not being strong, but nonetheless, the 12.7s, although their alpha damage isn't necessarily high, when you load out the tracer ammo into them, they have a particularly higher chance, in my opinion, uh, that they can set planes on fire. And the fire, fire is not a friend of many. No, it isn't at all. So right now I'm just climbing, trying to assess the situation, what I should go for. I see a lot of dogfights going on down below, but at the same time I'm building an altitude advantage here that will work into my favor when I dive down the enemy. Now, it looks like both my teammates here had way too much speed. They weren't throttle controlling, so I'm gonna dive down this Fakwa for a very easy kill. Come on. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm gonna miss as well. No, good. Alright, I got the kill. Nice and easy. Gonna climb again. Back towards the enemies. Mind you that this Falk Wolf on my level and heading this way. So again, I'm gonna pull off to the side. Not going to engage. Yeah, I'm gonna pull back. Not going to engage. Because, put it like this. I mean, it looks like I'm a pussy right now. And I have to admit, I do look like a wussy. If it, in fact... Not going for it. Not going for it. But, put it like this. If I went in, I could potentially die. Then I'd have to spawn it into a new plane. So that means I have repair costs. And then it also means time wasted. Where, if I just played conservatively like I am now, I'm closer to the battlefield. So I can go back in again. Uh-oh. I see something on my radar. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, good. He's way above. That's good. That's good. Whew. Another important thing. Look at your radar. All the time. Be careful. Now, that's a P-40. Alright, this is making me get a little bit worried here. Because he has high altitude advantage. Now, I can easily take on a P-40, because that's a Kitty Hawk, if I'm seeing that right. But what I'm worried about more is the planes that are behind. Because one head-on can quickly lead to another. And then that just leads to death. So I'm probably going to go in now. Yeah, this is starting to look a bit better. I've got speed. Is that P-40 dead? No, it's not. What the hell is a P-40 doing in here? He might have bought like a premium plane. Did he actually just damage the BF-109? Oh man. you got to be kidding me if the BF-109 was losing that. Ooh. But a P-51 has appeared. Very nice. He won't be having a nice day anytime soon, though. <laughs> That's good. That's good. What happens to that P-40? He's all the way down there. I'm going to reload. After every engagement, I just want to make sure that I have the most ammo possible. This guy's way ahead. He's gone. Okay, hold on. I might have to play a bit more risky now. If I want to come first place, I'm going to have to play a bit more risky. And you know what? Let's do it. I've already showed off this plane in more of a... Pretty much a good light, showing you guys what you can do with it. Now let's go balls deep. We're changing up play, we're gonna try to be more aggressive, and we're gonna try to come first place here. We're gonna try. Mind you, I say try. Doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna happen. Now, the guy who's first place, where is he at right now? I don't know where he's actually at on the map. Oh, he's down there, I think. Yeah, that's him gonna die, in fact. So yeah, it looks like he was playing it ballsy, very aggressive, and he reaped the rewards for it. So I'm going in here. That's not what I want. Okay, awkward. Very awkward, in fact. 
Oh, sugar. We've got people on my tail. Let's fly away. Let's fly away. If I can get, make one break off, then I can dogfight the other. You gonna go away or what? Go! <laughs> if I could just get more distance, then I could uh, turn around and at least head on that P47. Here we go. This is it. This is it. This is it. Perfect moment. Alright. We're going in! Oh shit, dog! <laughs> Damn that P47! Letting off his belts like that. What a belter. But I'm catching up on that BF-109 now. I don't have to worry about that P-47. What I do have to worry about is other planes behind. Or on top, more right, but more like. Anyway, there's the Yak-3P that's coming on in. That should kill- That nothing didn't even hit him! I can't believe it. Nothing even hit him. Oh, God! Oh, man! <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course, the head-on of the German plane has to end up with my death. Oh, well, that's what happens, man. That's what happens. We didn't come first place, but we got 10 kills in the end. I'm gonna keep on going with some of my other planes, but we'll cut on over to some RB now. Oh god, what the shit? Are you for real? Are you actually for real? I've got to play with jets? Oh man, can we, I know the BR- oh, God damn it, I know the BR can do this, but why? 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 Oh no. Ah. <sighs> I guess it'll have to be, won't it? It'll have to be, everybody. It's gonna have to be. You know what's funny? I don't- I don't know- You know what's funny? I don't think these guys really understand that if they keep on flying that direction, they're actually gonna go off the map. Like, look at the way that you take off from the airfield. Those guys are literally going into the corner of the map. What are they doing? I don't- I don't think they know what they're doing! The airfield is down there, man! The enemy's that way! <coughs> First enemy in sight! Mateys, it's a B-24! And he's coming this way. Now the question is who's gonna get to him first? Might be me. Might be that BF-109. Either way, I think we all want the kill. Oh, actually I think he's gonna come to me first. Check this out. You wanna see a plane disappear? Oh yeah. I do. That's for sure. Let it unleash! Oh! Just one little pilot! No! Oh shit, why couldn't I set him on fire? Out of all the damages I could do, I mean, one pilot is not bad, but there's like 12. It's a clown car in there. No, 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 my kill, my kill, my kill. God damn it, get in range! Game for the wings! Oh, this is a fight for the death or the kill steal. Finally! Holy crap. That took up a lot of my ammo. I think I used about a third of my ammo there for a bomber. Whatever. He's down. I got the kill. Whew! I actually, I, I have massive respect for, I think it was that Falkowulf right there, who did not actually try to shoot and take that kill. I mean, it looked like he could have, but he didn't. 
So massive shout out to I think it was Moravinka, was it him? Mor Mor Vinka? Something I think that was him. If that was, then massive shout out to you guy. You dude. For not being one of those guys. But it's okay. In the end. Kills mine. B24 down. That means some ground units on the ground are gonna be happy. F8F in front. They still have lots of guys. I wonder if they have any jets. I mean, we had three. One of them crashed. Two of them are going still. Now the question is, do they have jets? Hmm. Another F8F that's high. Am I gonna head this guy on? It's another question to be answered. Ah, oh, it's a meteor! So they do have something. It's the Brits and the Americans. Versus the Germans. Alright, fair enough. Here I go! Looks like I'm gonna be engaging- Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hello. You pulled up at the last moment, didn't you? Didn't you, honey? So I'm gonna break off now, and I'm gonna go for this John Davis dude. Over here. F8F. Looks like he got an AI. Massive contribution to the team effort. Of course. Going for the AI. Very important. Surprisingly, though, you get so much points for killing AI. It's like a normal kill near enough. Just how many points you get. You got like 300 just for a single one. It's quite a lot, in fact. Now, I'm just wondering if I should keep on going for this John Davies. He's pretty much just broken off. This Falkowith over here. Or if I should just turn around and go for the other guy. In fact, I think I'm just going to turn around and go for the other guy. I don't feel like going for a chase of a plane that can keep up pace. And, but, looking at how he's turned around, this is an opportunity for me to go back in. Let's do it. Will he die? No. Water's overheated. Water's overrated. And here we go. Come on, don't hit me! Oh, shit! <laughs> the plane is on fire! Hold on, turn off the engine! The engine's already... Br the engine is off. Because I'm on... Well, yeah. I took massive damage. If the fire could have gone out, I could have floated all the way back. A match ended so abruptly. Wow. I think that's pretty much uh, RB in a nutshell, isn't it? Don't do head-ons, kids. Don't do head-ons. Well, that was rather anticlimactic, wasn't it? But anyway, guys, I am done. That is the fuck with 190D12. I'm not sure if that last match was really a good representation of it in RB. You can get a lot more better matches than that. Lesson to be learned, don't head on, even if you think you're going to win. An F8F1B has a lot of firepower. A lot. So anyway, guys, what do you want me to fly out with in the next video and in which mode? But until then, this is Krebs, and I'll catch you guys next time.